All right. Are we ready? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the MFA Showcase Reading Series 2016. Give it up. Woo! This is installment number. Four, five, four or five, something like that. We missed out on Hector, but Hector is going to come back for us in the fall, hopefully. Um, Actually, nah. Fuck y'all. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. But we are here for a phenomenal night tonight with Liz McGee. And I, right before we get started, I just want to say that um, I taught Liz's poems in class yesterday, and it was amazing because they give us this reading list to teach uh, intro to creative writing here, and a lot of it's kind of crap. It, it really is, if I just have to be honest. So I'm like, I'm going to teach some really good poetry today, and we were talking about setting and place, and we taught Liz's poems, and it was phenomenal, and so you get to hear some of that tonight, so I'm really excited. Um, but before that, we are going to have Liz's former student, Tyler Nielsen, He's going to come up, share some work, and introduce Liz for us. So give it up for Tyler. Yeah. Hi. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hi. Uh, you can do it. All right. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tyler. And I'm going to be reading a story I wrote called The Dress. I can feel the air escape my lungs and work its way past my lips into a white fog. I have to stop. My breath will give me away. Stop. Calm down. Slower breaths. Control your breathing. I can hear the sound of leaves crumbling underneath his boots as he gets closer to me. The night can only do so much to hide me from him. The mud is cold as my hands sink into the ground. I can move. I can't move or he will see me. I hold my breath so the white fog won't give away my hiding spot. The cold freezes the tears onto my cheeks. My chest starts to burn from holding the fog in. I have to concentrate on something else. I focus my attention on the mud in between my fingers. I can feel the small sticks trapped, to, trapped in the ground poking at them. I can feel all kinds of bugs exploring my arms. Some of them start to bite. I wince at the pain and bite my lip to hold back the audible reaction. The burning gets stronger. I can't take it anymore. My vocal cords tremble and sigh as I exhale. A cry escapes my lips as I try to take the exhale back. Shit. Did he hear me? I, can hear, I can't hear his footsteps anymore. Maybe he's gone. Maybe he gave up. Fog starts to creep past my shoulder. It's not my fog. Why are you hiding? I just wanted to let you know how pretty you look in that dress. I can't move. Tears streaming down my face faster than they can freeze. I can feel a cry slowly make its way up my throat. Please don't hurt me, I plead with him. Oh, I won't hurt you. You're going to enjoy every second of what I'm going to do to you. I grip the mud in between my hands and slap it across his face, aiming for his eyes so I have a chance to start to run. I run faster than I ever thought I could. The bark of the tree scrapes my palms as I use them for momentum to propel me forward. Faster, farther away from him. You little faggot, now I'm gonna make it hurt. His voice isn't as far away as I hoped. How is he so close to me? I push my legs further to run faster, but the cold has made them numb. Push harder, run faster. I punch my legs to get them to go faster. Don't think I won't catch you, boy. And when I do, I'll show you what we do to little faggots who wear dresses. He starts to laugh. My crying turns into screaming as I try to escape. Just a little bit further. I can see the light from the road a half a mile away. He won't be able to hurt me there. It's too open. I'll be safe there. I feel a yank of the collar of my dress, but I shake it off. The second yank forces me to the ground. I hit it with a heavy blow. I feel my skull clam against a tree. Warm fluid starts to drip down my neck. 
I told you I'd get you. Now turn over, turn over, faggot, and let me teach you a lesson. I'm too dizzy from the fall to put up a fight as he flips me over and pushes my dress up. I can feel the elastic from my underwear tear away. The cold stings my bare skin. His hands spread my cheeks apart. I hear him spit, and I feel the warm saliva dripping between my cheeks. I'm going to show you what a real man does. I cry out in pain as I feel him slide his dick inside me. I feel my skin rip. He grabs my hair and forces my head up to his and keeps thrusting. Isn't this what all faggots want? Tell me you like it, he whispers in my ear. I'm silent. I won't give him the satisfaction. Tell me you like my dick, faggot, he says, getting louder. Silent. His grip on my hair tightens. He slams my face into the ground, and I can feel the cartilage from my nose separate. He pulls me back up. Tell me, faggot. I like it, I whisper. What's that, faggot? I couldn't hear you. I like it, I scream. Good. I feel his dick slide out. Maybe he's done, and maybe I gave him what he wanted. His hand grabs my waist, and I feel him flip me over and throw my legs on his shoulders and slide into me again. I want to see you enjoy it. I start to cry. He rips the rest of my dress, exposing my breasts. I'm completely naked. My dick starts to get hard. Why? I don't want this. I'm not enjoying this. See, I knew you liked it, faggot. His thrusting starts to get faster. I can tell he's close to coming. Please, come. Please, let this be over. Please, come. Please, finish. Please, come. The words escape my brain. I didn't mean to say them out loud. You want me to come? Fine, I'll come in you. His thrusting gets more aggressive and I can feel his muscles tighten. Finally, I can feel his warm fill inside me. His body quivers and I stare up at him. He's done. I feel him pull out of me. The warm fluid runs down my skin. He zips up his pants. Now don't let me see you wearing a dress around here again. You hear me, boy? I nod. He starts to walk away. I hear one last thing before he's gone. Fucking faggot. I stand up, and I feel the blood rush down my face into my mouth. The taste of pennies makes me vomit. I let out everything in my stomach. I reach for the remains of my dress. Is there anything left to cover me up? Or do I have to walk back home naked, covered in blood? I start to cry again. At least the tears will wash away the blood. now for Liz. Liz is a third year MFA in poetry at CU Boulder, where she teaches creative writing. She taught me. <laughs> um, her work has been featured in New Delta Review, Cloud, Cloud Rodeo, The Volta, and elsewhere, and has received nominations from the Pushcart Prize as well as Sundress Press, Best of the Net Anthology. Liz is originally from New Orleans, Louisiana, where she lived until Hurricane Katrina. New Orleans and the trauma of displacement continues to imbue her work. She loves Kanye West <laughs> and is often mistaken for a man over the phone in the McDonald's drive thru <laughs> Alyssa Gilbert once described her voice as meaty. You'll see. Liz has worked as a Chick-fil-A drive thru attendant, a document a document controller on Mississippi refinery, a sales clerk at Hot Mama, which surprisingly is not a maternity store, and like me, agrees that Dan was a cop-out for Gossip Girl. Just 
Okay. Um, this first poem is called Patient Bodies. The child is a realm of one terrible event, you realize one afternoon. You are back in the waterland, living amongst witches, bristle enough in some ways. You take pleasure in the terrible with other women. Indeed, you believe in them more than most, these fractured yellow suns. Bloom. He wanted me to grow roots against mountains without a drop of moisture. We meet beneath his ignorance and I buy a blossom, which immediately withers. You can almost grab the fracture between us. He drinks and I go home. That night, I can't believe how much I love him. Watch him dance across the plains, half full. I am not this thing I keep pretending to be. Some diagnosis in a stretched out hand. I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense anymore, but you used to like this about me. You used to leave messages in the beds of your cuticles for me. This dream where I am nothing in our backyard, a blanket by the water, and other things I cannot face. <coughs> Inlet. You are pushing very hard towards the past, behind faces and slicks of oil. The mountain hovers until it doesn't. Women do yoga and smile like other animals here. You want to say something to them, or bend into the same shape, or moan a moment to protect, spilling language in the dreams we see our blushing windows. For every mountain a haunting occurs. Our backs hurt, our feet turn outward like fins, collapsing across the plains. We are drawn to the oceans and lakes, <coughs> rivers filled with fish. My south dies against the bed frame and everything veins. A man carries me to the woods over his elbows like a child. Our suffering is made of those who have fallen before us. Our histories tend to build a trap we wish to escape. Eva. When you stop fucking me, I build a wall. I lift weights at the gym and cry. I am afraid the man next to me will tell me to smile. I'm afraid if I smile, I will kill him. <laughs> or imagine him kissing the top of my head with one gold tooth. I dwindle again to muscle and bone. Sweat against machines with appetite. I wrap my arms around myself in the car afterward. Watch the steam reveal your fingertips on the passenger side window. Blemish. I try to imagine someone new touching me and shiver into the mountains. A man walks shirtless through snow, his sinew a broken promise. He will leave like the others. He will try to catch you with all his strength and fail. From the womb, you sprout antlers and watch the sky move backward. You listen for the sound of something tender. The hunter. My belly shrinks rapidly in the weeks after I leave. Gravity is shifting and a child. The desert is a craving, the pines turn to ice. I should remain quiet. I should fill these little holes I thought were gone. The man at the gas station tells you you're pretty, says this over you as your words evaporate, asks if you're compatible astrologically in between bites of hot dog. Like a new home, he stares at your exposed belly, a mess and marsh of flesh. Another hunter. You help me move into storage the week of the blizzard. When your SUV slides across ice, you think about doing it again. You think about light as a place to live, wield a gun and speak of love like they are the same thing. Violence so subtle it is almost missed. Tracking. 
On New Year's Eve, you run away to Denver. You call your mother on Ambien, track him, then leave. Not long ago, his head rests against yours, and you are reminded of Lazarus. You want to bring him back to life. You want to glue him to your back and carry him through his existence. But the braille of nature bleeds with sounds of water, soil and bottled copper, already wounded, stars of marrow smashed like jam. Evo. Foxes chew away their back paws as our feet lose balance in the wilderness. We hunt the ghosts in getting older. We search for purpose in our existence. The midwife amid mountains believes in spirits, and I do too. I find the photo of you with her. Rub two sticks together before burning at the counter. Your father tells you that it will all be over soon. <coughs> Swoops in and brushes your feathers back. You break into the house you shared with your ex-lover. You take things back, the photo, a leather jacket, the deer skull which has ripped in half. Astro. I check your horoscope before mine in the morning, or rather, cannot resist the stars turning over. The moon says, place your fingers in your mouth. Make time for sleep and personal hygiene. It happens all of a sudden, a long, lovely conversation at the foot of their desires. A prayer in my mouth about moving in the middle of the semester, an egg for my mother who only wants to help. Struck. Some emotions appear to touch I repeat this illness as instances of destruction. The texture my grandmother makes between herself and others, between French and English, a surprising marrow down my chin. They say the fetus feels her mother's trauma in the womb, that since moving here I have become unrecognizable. <coughs> Another hunter, part two. You meet him for drinks somewhere downtown. When you invite him back to your place, you dawdle around the kitchen. You postpone inevitable groping and tongues. He pushes against you, hardness on your belly. You stand still. Wet things enter your mouth. When someone is kind to you, you let things like this happen. You cut your hair to the scalp and drip. Sister. My head is braided to that of another small woman. To make sense of this, we learn to swim in short bursts, follow one another to the woods and bathtub. Our lives settle into patterns of waiting for the other to finish. I knew I loved her when the radio went out one evening, when her head dipped below the surface as I came up for air. I can only explain things as romantic, some influence over the other. When you do things without me, I hope you know that you are breaking my heart. Kitty Pool. I pick a switch from the yard for my bad behavior. The ants laugh at this trepidation. Wet ass under horse thick hair burns even before being thwacked. I am here with bodies and a piece of bad news. The rigs keep floating in fire. It's very dramatic the way I hand you this map, the reenactment of my body. I am looking to hurt you and me and him, tug a bit into my mother, paling to be nothing. Summer smashed the people I love into weather an assemblage of fairy tales and glass rafts. Even at his death, my father kept denying his out-of-body experience, an autopsy, then tarot under the deck, 
a place overlaid on another Lafitte. We call the flounder a soul. Tangipahoa covered in roaches, wild fowl scout, scatter like patois along the coast, the Acadians deported and sent here, Jellions like the river, Vivre de Borde. My accent sounds nothing like it used to, a buzzing at the ankles and bloodletting. Our names are found with the many, a swordfish, balsamine, the gull's wide stance, This one's called Gemini, and it's dedicated to my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> I tell my hairdresser about you before she asks if you're a Gemini, which you are. Gemini, patron saint of fuckboys, <laughs> holds a woman in each hand, a babushka doll with endless selves unfolding. I meet him by the water once more, commune with God in the sense that I you suffering as a springboard. A quest similar to devouring and you open me like a garbage lid to piss in. Like some wounded, wounded thing to throw scraps at. I see clearly what you've done, what you want. Lip licking under an old oak and I hollow like the deer's empty carcass. You touch with two hands inside me another fucking bird poem. Headaches embroidered on a napkin. I don't need astrology to tell me what's going on now. But I show it to you anyway, like another person who believes me. The end. Another hand for Liz McGee. And for Tyler Nielsen. All right, well, thank you all very much. So we're going to take a, a bit of a break now. Like, we'll have the rest of March off from the reading series, and then in uh, April 6th, we will start back up with Loie Merritt. Uh, in the meantime, actually, we will have um, a couple things. I think there's something I'm forgetting, but there's one thing that we will have. On the 23rd, Hilary Seuss will play here. She's in our MFA program, so she will be playing her music with us. Not a part of the reading series, but a different thing. Um, but yeah, thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Liz. One more round of applause for them.